Ladies and gentlemen, this is Queen. They were advertised by the Melody Maker with the words Britain's most regal band awaits your presence. It was a cold Christmas Eve in 1975 when people quaint in front of the Hammersmith Odeon in London to hear and see them perform and make rock music history. It was also the first time they performed their one-of-a-kind hit Bohemian Rhapsody in front of so so many people. It was one of the nights that really defined their career as artists and that earned them a place among the top of the rock stars of all times. It was the Christmas Eve in 1975 that Queen performed at the Odeon Hammersmith in London. And today's episode of the concert series is all about that night. If you're new to the channel, hi, my name is Emma, welcome to the concert series. This is a series where I get ready for concerts that I wish I could have attended but I sadly can't because I was born 50 years too late. So in this video I'm gonna show you how I created this makeup look and I'm gonna tell you all about the night that Queen performed at the Hammersmith Odeon in London. And if you're interested in learning a little bit more about Freddie, Brian, Roger and John and the Christmas Eve 10,000 of people sat in front of their TV to watch them perform just keep on watching this video. So I really want to go with red and yellow as the primary colors for my makeup look because I really love how they are incorporated in this shirt and I personally just really love the color combination of red and yellow. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is to use a small brush like this and I'm just gonna mix the yellow and the orange and apply it all over my lid. So their performance at December 24th in 1975 at the Hammersmith Odeon in London was the final gig of the Queen's UK tour in support for their album A Night at the Opera. The album had only been released a couple weeks prior and had already gone platinum. Their hit single Bohemian Rhapsody was on its nine week long stay in the UK charts where it topped all of the other songs at number one and that night was actually the first time that they were going to perform it live in front of such a big audience. So Queen had already played four shows at the Odeon prior to this night with an overwhelming amount of positive response from both press and fans. The Sounds magazine even titled that everything about them says that they are more important than any other band right now. So next up on this small brush I'm gonna go in with this beautiful dark red color and I'm just gonna draw these iconic little twiggy bows. I really love them. I feel like they're really popular for the time. Keep in mind that this was the mid 70s and the 70s were kind of all about disco but then there was also still a lot from the 60s being incorporated and I feel like playing with colors for your twiggy bows was a really popular thing during the 70s. So per usual with these bows, I'm just kind of foreshadowing where I want it to go. Just drawing it all the way down there, like so. And then I'm just slowly working more and more product in. So the gig was advertised by Melody Maker with the words Britain's most regal bands awaits your presence and I feel like that's so majestic and so beautiful and the 5000 concert tickets were sold out pretty early on. When asked about the night Brian May recalled that this was the first time a full concert of Queen was broadcasted live on TV and that they were super excited. I feel like you also have to keep in mind that this was Christmas Eve so a lot of people were actually in front of their TVs or their radios listening to Queen perform and watching them on stage and their amazing show. So now I'm just gonna do the exact same thing on the other eye. So Freddie Mercury actually played on a white grand piano by Beckstein that was imported for that one performance only. And being the legendary man he was, he actually had an outfit change mid-performance where he changed from a white catsuit into a black one. I quickly want to touch on the topic of their costumes for this performance because I feel like all of them looked so, so amazing. I love their looks. I feel like they're so interesting. There is so much going on and that is why I really wanted to go all out on the makeup and kind of pick an outfit that's a bit more out there because I feel like the members of Queen would have really appreciated. So even though A Night at the Opera was in the charts at the time of the performance, their set list mainly drew from earlier songs 
and it also included Brian May's iconic really long guitar solo in the middle of the performance. So the whole performance is absolutely amazing and per usual I'm gonna link it down below for you and I highly recommend you to watch the whole thing and especially Brian's guitar solo because it is so so amazing. Another thing that's kind of really special about this performance is that towards the end of it they're actually playing a medley from a lot of different rock and roll songs like Jailhouse Rock by Elvis Presley. And I know that a lot of people have mixed feelings about covers, but I personally love it when an artist takes another artist's songs and kind of turns it into their own. And I feel like Queen mastered it with this mashup at the end of their performance. The band also only played the ballad section of Bohemian Rhapsody as a part of a medley with a lot of older songs that they had already published at the time. And the only other song from A Night at the Opera that they were playing was God Save the Queen, which they played by tape at the very end of the performance. So next up I'm just gonna use some eyeliner and I'm gonna do a really classic cat eye look. So if you watch a lot of my makeup tutorials you know that I don't really have like a solid plan when I start but I just kind of have an idea and I pretty much just do whatever I like doing on the way and as you can see I actually winged this one two times. So I kind of did like a double winged liner and I really love it so I'm gonna do the same thing on this eye too. Just gonna add a second one above. I need to get a new eyeliner. This one is almost empty, which makes it kind of hard. Yeah, there we go. I guess that's all right. So the show was broadcasted by BBC Two as part of their music program The Old Grey Whistle Test, with the audio later being broadcast on BBC Radio One as well. They were presented on stage by Bob Harris, who later recalled them being in a really good, upbeat, party mood that night. Unfortunately, the cameras were packed away by the group's second encore, and so only the audio of them performing Seven Seas of Rye and See What a Fool I've Been were recorded. To me personally, this is really, really sad, because honestly, The Seven Seas of Rye is one of my absolutely favorite Queen hit of all time. I love that song. I feel like it's so underrated. A lot of people are more into like the later 70s Queen stuff or like the 80s Queen. But my favorite record by Queen is definitely Sheer Heart Attack and The Seven Seas of Rye is on there as like a sample version and then the next album featured the full song. And I love it. I absolutely love that song. It is so energetic. It's so beautiful. And it's just one of my favorite songs of all time. So I'm super, super sad that there isn't any footage of them performing but you can actually listen to the live performance and it's really good. So as said, I kind of really want to do something super out there for the makeup, so I'm gonna add rhinestones next. I love to add little jewels and crystals to my face for makeup looks and I decided to go with red to match the look overall. So I'm just gonna go in with some medium-sized red crystals and I'm gonna apply them below my lower lash line. I'm gonna start right here. just like that. And now I'm gonna do the same thing to the other eye. Please excuse if the light is kind of changing. I can see it in the camera and it already bothers me, but the weather today is kind of really weird. Like it's pretty cloudy. And so I adjust the light and then whenever a cloud passes by, it kind of gets darker. So I really hope you can forgive me for that. So before I'm gonna put on my fake lashes now, I'm just gonna use some mascara first. You already know that it's lash primer first for me. So I've already prepared the fake lashes, but I'm just going to quickly show you how I do it. So I'm actually going to use this on my lower lashes because I really, really love that a lot more than just doing it on the upper lashes, like most people do. So what I do, I actually cut the fake lash in half. As you can see, I took out a part because they weren't really even. And now I'm just going to apply this to my lower lash line. So these ones are actually longer towards the middle than they are on the outside, but because I cut them up, I'm actually gonna use them the other way around. So I'm gonna make it even more dramatic by adding the end with the fuller lashes on the outer corner of my eyes. And then I'm just applying them like so. So for me personally, it takes quite a lot longer to let them dry on your lower lash line than it does using them on your upper lashes, but I feel like it really pays off because the look is so creative and unique. Just make sure to place them underneath your lower lashes. 
and then just hold them there and let it dry. Okay, so as you can see, the eyes are super dramatic and I feel like we're kind of done with them. So next up, I'm just gonna fill in my eyebrows while I'll tell you a little bit more about Queen Life at the Hammersmith Odeon in 1975. So I'm just filling them in super natural. I kind of want them to look as natural as possible because that was popular in the 70s. And also because there's obviously already a lot going on with this makeup look. So because of its high recording quality and the high quality of the footage and also because it was broadcasted nationwide on Christmas Eve, Queen at the Hammersmith in 1975 is the most popular bootleg of the band. Many of the songs that they played that night were later dropped from the Hammersmith set and wouldn't appear on live albums until Life Killers in 1979 and Life at Wembley in 1986. And honestly, that is one reason why I would have loved to see this concert live. For me, there are a lot of reasons and I'm gonna touch on them later. But basically, having these songs performed for the last time for so, so many years in a big show is such a unique and special experience and I wish I could have been there. The original multi-tape recording were believed to be lost until being recovered in 2009. Moving on to blush, I'm just gonna use this lipstick and apply it and like kind of tap it really lightly onto my cheeks to just apply a little bit of blush. As said, I feel like the eye makeup is so heavy that I kind of want to keep it a bit more simple with the rest. So I'm just gonna tap and tap and then I'm just using my fingers to blend this. The DVD of the performance also features some scenes from Queen's Japan Tour, which I absolutely love. As you can see, this is a really Asian-inspired top. It's originally from the 70s. I'm so, so lucky to have found it at a wonderful vintage store. And honestly, I love their outfits. And I feel like they took a lot of inspiration with wearing kimonos and stuff like that on their later tours. And that is why I decided to go with this outfit for the look. So last but not least, I'm just gonna apply this on my lips. And I'm not like really fully applying it, but just a little bit. And then using my fingers to work it in. So that's it for the finished look. I really love this makeup. I feel like it's super unique, it's really out there and it incorporates all of the queen spirit perfectly. However, if you were actually attending the concert, by now we would probably put on our coats and walk through the really cold London evening about to see an amazing live performance. I actually have my coat right here and I'm gonna have it on and some shots for the finishing results that I'm gonna show you right now because I feel like it really works well with the look. But before doing that, I quickly want to talk about why this concert was so special and why I would have loved to seen it. First of all, I personally prefer Queen in the 70s to Queen in the 80s. It's just a personal choice. I really like their music as said. That's my favorite album. It's an original pressing and it is so, so, so special to me. I also feel like the fact that this show was broadcast on Christmas Eve shows how much of an impact Queen had in the 70s in England. They were one of the most popular bands of all times and especially during that time they were just on top of everything and I love their music. To me honestly Queen in the 70s was as good as it's going to get and honestly seeing these legends perform live would have meant the world to me. I know that you can still see Queen live, but to be honest, for me, it's just kind of not the same. Seeing them perform now without John Deacon and the legendary Freddie Mercury. To me, the band as a whole really is what made them as popular. I don't know if you've actually known this about Queen, but they are all part of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame for songwriting because every single member of this band has written one of their most popular hits. And I feel like that's something really special among bands because usually there are one or two people who compose the songs and then everyone kind of tags along, which is great as well, like no shame to those bands. But a band like Queen with so much creativity and potential is something that I really would have loved to see perform on the height of their career on this Christmas Eve in 1975. So as said, I'm just gonna put up some close-up shots now of the makeup and also of the outfit so you can properly see everything that I've done. Yeah, that's it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I would love you to give it a thumbs up and maybe even share it with a friend. It supports me, it supports the channel, and it would mean a lot. 
please, please, please leave a comment down below if you've attended this concert or any Queen concert and you just want to share your story with me and with all of us. I would absolutely love to know about it, so make sure to leave a comment down below. If there are any other concerts you would have loved to see featured in this series, you can just leave a comment down below. I read every single comment and I try to respond to as many as possible and I would love to hear your suggestions. If you're interested in all things 60s and 70s, like the makeup, the pop culture, the fashion and the people and all of these fun things, make sure to subscribe to the channel because I upload multiple videos every single week all about that and I would love to have you around. I hope you have an amazing day, go out, enjoy the sunshine, take yourself some time to focus on you and your mental health today and I will catch you in the next one. Bye guys! Bye.